dear student welcome to epg patshala today i am going to present my module soil horizons soil it is a most dynamic component on the earth crust and it is very difficult to understand wholly the properties of soil and it appears different to different persons for example for farmers it may appear as only a medium to grow his crops where the plant get support and nutrient to grow for a common person it may appears like only a dust dead material having no life in it for geologist it may appears only like an outer crust of the earth surface but in the ecological term soil is the most dynamic component of our environment which is consisting of different communities of organisms in it soil color depth and composition it usually varies from place to place but in common soil has three important components such as inorganic material organic material water and gaseous phase every soil is made up of successions of layer and collectively known as soil profiles these soil profiles usually reach to the parent material the soil profile is the vertical exposure of the soil presenting different horizons these horizons they are also build up under the influence of various factors such as parental material climate topography microorganisms etc the combination of these different horizons usually impart different physical chemical and biological properties to the soil the top soil or the litter soil is known as o horizon it usually consists of freshly fallen leaves or partially decomposed organic matter just below a o horizon lies a horizon in the a horizon usually decomposed organic matter is present now these two horizons a and o horizons the plants roots penetrates into these two horizons and these two horizons are known to con consist numerous amount of macro and micro organisms which will provide nutrient to the soil and on the other hand will help to increase the fertility of the soil the various other horizons are also present such as e b c and r respectively now from the diagram it is shown that the different soil horizons are present in the soil for example o a e b c and r horizons which are being depicted in the diagram very clearly we start with the o horizon this layer generally forms above the mineral soil or occurs in an organic soil profile the o stands for organic matter it is a surface layer dominated by the presence of large amount of organic material derived from dead plants or animal residues which is in varying stages of decomposition the o horizon is generally absent in grassland regions the o horizon usually occur in forest areas and is commonly referred to as forest floor the o horizon should be considered distinct from the layer of leaf litter covering mainly heavily vegeted areas which contains no withered mineral particles and is not part of soil itself o horizon may be divided into o1 and o2 categories whereby o1 horizons contain decomposed matter whose origin can be spotted on site and o2 horizons contain only well decomposed organic matter the origin of which is not readily visible o horizon may also be divided into three subordinate o horizons denoted as oi oe and oa next comes a horizon the a horizon is the topmost mineral horizon often referred as the top soil this layer generally contains enough 
partially decomposed organic matter to give soil a color darker than that of the lower horizons. The A horizons are often coarse in structure having lost some of the finer material by translocation to lower horizons and by erosions. This layer is known as the zone in which the most biological activity occurs. Soil organisms such as earthworm, earth pods, nematodes, fungi, etc. and many species of bacteria and archaea are concentrated here, often in close association with plant roots. Thus, A horizon may be referred to as the biomantle. However, since biological activity extend far deeper into the soil, it cannot be used as a chief distinguishing feature of an A horizon. Next is our E horizon. E being short for elevated is most commonly used to label a horizon that has been significantly reached of clay, iron and aluminium oxides which leaves a concentration of resistant material such as quartz in the sand and silt sizes. These are present only in older well developed soils and generally occur between A and B horizons. The E horizons often has a pale color that is generally lighter in color than either the horizons above or below it. E horizons are commonly found in soil developed under forest but are rare in soil developed under grassland. In regions where this designation is not employed, leached layer are classified firstly as a A or B according to the other characteristics and then appended with the designations E. In soils that contains gravel due to animals bioturbations, Astoni layer commonly forms near or at the base of E horizons. Next horizon is B horizon. B horizon from below an O, A or E horizon and they have undergone sufficient changes during soil genesis such that the properties of their original parent material are no longer discriminable. The B horizon is commonly referred to as the subsoil. In humid regions, B horizons are the layers of maximum accumulation of materials such as silicate, clay, iron and aluminium oxides and organic materials too. These materials typically accumulate through a process termed alveolization wherein the material gradually wash in forms the overlying horizons. Accordingly, this layer is also referred to as elevated horizon or the zone of accumulation. In addition, it is defined as having a distinctly different structure or consistency than horizons above and the horizons below. The B horizons may also have stronger color than the A horizons in arid and semi-arid regions. Calcium carbonate or calcium sulfate may accumulate in the B horizon. As with the A horizons, the B horizons may be divided into B1, B2 and B3 types and this is under the Australian system. B1 is a transitional zone of opposite nature to an A3 dominated by the properties of the B horizons below it, but containing some A horizon characteristics. B2 horizons have a concentration of clay, mineral or organics and features the highest soil development within the profile. B3 horizons are transitional between the overlying B layers and the material beneath it. Whether C or D horizons, the A3, B1 and B3 horizons are not tightly defined and their uses is generally at the discretion of the individual worker. Plant roots penetrate through this layer, but it has little humus. It is usually brownish or reddish due to the residual clay and iron oxides. Next to the B horizon lies the C horizon. The C horizon is below the B horizon. This layer is little affected by soil forming processes and they thus have a lack of pedological development. In other words, the C horizon is the unconsolidated material underlying the solemn A and B horizons. It may or may not be the same as the parent material from which the solemn formed. The C horizon forms as the R horizons withers and the rocks break up into smaller particles. The C horizons is below the zone of greatest biological activity and it has not been sufficiently 
altered by soil genesis to qualify as a B horizon. In dry regions, carbonates and gypsums may be concentrated in the C horizons. While loose enough to be dug with the shovel, C horizons materials often retain some of the structural features of the parent rock or geological deposits from which it forms. The A and the B layers usually originated from C horizons. The upper layer of the C horizons may in time become a part of solemn as weathering and erosion continue. The sea horizons may contain lumps or more likely large cells of unwithered rocks rather than being made up solely of small fragments as in the solemn. It contains rocks with cracks and cervices. Next is R horizon. R horizons are the layers of partially withered bedrocks at the base of the soil profile as appears in the diagram. Unlike the above layers, our horizons are composed largely of consolidated masses of hard rocks that cannot be excavated by hand. Soils formed in situ will exhibit strong similarities to this bedrock layer. Other horizon is P horizon. These horizons are also heavily organic but are distinct from O horizons in that they form under water lodged conditions only. The P designation comes from their common name peats. They may be divided into P1 and P2 in the same way as O horizon is being divided. This layer accumulates iron, clay, aluminium and organic compounds, a process referred to as alluviation. Now, factors affecting soil profile. The development of structure in arable soil depends on the following factors. Climate. Climate has considerable influence on the degree of aggregation as well as on the type of structure. In arid regions, there is very little aggregation of primary particles. In semi-arid regions, the degree of aggregation is considered to be greater. Organic matter improves the structure of a sandy soil as well as of clay soil. In case of sandy soil, the sticky and slimy material produced by the decomposing organic matter and the associated microorganisms cement the sand particles together to form aggregates. In case of clay soil, it modifies the properties of clay by reducing its cohesiveness. This helps making clay more crumbly. Next factor, tillage. Cultivation implements break down the larger clods into smaller fragments and aggregates. For obtaining good granular and crumbly structure, optimum moisture content in the soil is necessary. If the moisture content is too high, it will form large clod on drying. If it is too low, some of the existing aggregates will be broken down. Plant roots and residues, these are also the another factors affecting the soil profile. Excretion of gelatinous organic compound and excudates from roots serves a link. Root hairs make soil materials to cling together grass and cereal roots and pressure exerted by the roots also held the particles together. Dehydration of the soil strains the soil due to shrinkage. Results in cracks lead to aggregation. Plant top residues shade the soil, prevent it from extreme and sudden temperature and moisture changes and also from rain drop impedance. Plant residues serves as a food to microbes which are the prime aggregate builders. Animals Among the soil, fauna, small animals like earthworm, moles and insects etc. that burrow in the soils are the chief agents that take part in the aggregation of the finer particles. Another factor like microbes, example algae, fungi, actinomycetes keeps the soil particles together. Fungi and actinomycetes exert mechanical binding by mycelia, cementation by the products of decomposition and material synthesized by the bacteria. Fertilizers like sodium nitrate destroy granulation by reduction the stability of aggregates. Few fertilizers for example CAN help in development of good structure. Wetting and drying. When a dry soil is wetted, the soil collides, swells on absorbing water. On drying, shrinkage produces strains in the soil, mass gives rise to cracks which breaks up into clods and granules of various sizes. Then clay, clay are the active mineral composition of the soil dominantly colloids and crystalline. 
the crystalline nature of the clay is such that they have definite repeating arrangement of atoms which they are composed of majority are made up of planes of oxygen atom with silicon and aluminum atoms holding the oxygen atom together by ionic bonding water soil formed in shoreline deposits have a coarse structure and occupy higher landscape position in lake beds with a very low influx of sediments organic substances dominate the sediments and peat forms soil formed in shoreline deposits have a coarse structure and occupy higher landscape position in lake beds with a very low influx of sediments organic substances dominate and the sediments and the peats are formed marine and lacustrine deposits forms in low energy environment under inland seas and lakes these sediments are typically coarse near the shore and finer towards the middle of the lake or sea several shoreline features can be associated with inland water bodies including deltas sand dunes and beaches deltas are essentially alluvial fans with their sediments deposits underwater so these are some of the factors which are having effective influence on the soil profile and distinguish each horizon from each other below and above it the pedologist also have help by studying the presence or the absence of horizons to study the soil types moreover due to the human intervention the top layer of the soil or the plant cover above the soil surface is being eroded day by day and due to this accelerated rate of erosion the erosion when reaches to the soil profile it will erode the soil and make it unfertile wherever not all the soils are containing all the type of the horizons present in the soil for example in the eroded soil the o horizon and the a horizons are mostly absent whereas in the poorly developed soil the b horizons will not be found the a horizon it is considered to be the very important horizon of the soil because it provides nutrition and fertility to the soil helps to develop the plant therefore intense care should be taken that the soil horizon or soil profile should be maintained of a particular soil so that favorable environment can be provided for the plant to establish further intense care should also be taken to stop the erosion and the compaction of the soil by applying various soil management practices thank you